scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Confidants, come on in and welcome to Champagne Secrets, located in the Champagne City, baby. <laughs> come meet me, the Empress, down at the Secret Chalet for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, uh, a little clink with chaos, with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in. And if you're one of my non-alcoholic kind of confidants, don't worry about it. Grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here. And if you're listening in the morning, then go ahead and grab you some orange juice. Pour it on in and make it a mimosa. It's all good. On your way in, hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the secret chalet for another show. As far as what I'm drinking on today, y'all already know. My Moet and Chandon Imperial Rosé. Get you some. It's all good. Now, let's get into this Baddies East Reunion Part 2 Tea. So the scene starts off where it left off with the fight with Siki and Entertainment tonight on last week. We see Siki in this week just giving face shots after face shots. Y'all got to understand, windmilling is not fighting. It's swinging, but it's not fighting. Siki is focused. She's taking focused shots. E.T. Just, just trying to hit something. She's swinging all over the place. This is the difference between a fighter and someone who fights. A fighter waits for an opening bobs and weaves to dodge punches and take shots when they can connect a person who fights is just swinging hoping that one of those hits connect you get it now there's a difference so now et said she flipped siki right actually what happened was siki was in the process of flipping et and biggie was in the way look at the pictures it looks like she tried to get a lick in on et and in the process, she tripped Siki and Siki fell because you also see Biggie fall. This fall had nothing to do with the skills of E.T. Nothing. You see Biggie trying to get in. Security grabs her. You see Anna trying to roll, run over and jump in. And Sky runs in to intervene. And by this time, all of the security is there. You didn't get jumped, sis. I don't know where we started this narrative at. She didn't get jumped. I know those punches felt like you were jumped, but they, but you weren't. See, by this time, Anna is being held back and Sky is already covering them and security is everywhere. Roly is trying to get Anna, so she grabs onto her and she falls in the tussle and Anna loses her wig. So the reason you thought you were jumped is because Anna was on the back of Sky fighting Roly. She wasn't fighting you. E.T. is on the floor, and Biggie is trying to get to her. Looks like she has a piece of her dress or her hair, but it's something blue. Siki is already up. Look. Anna is pushing security, and she's running away, trying to run towards Roly. Natalie looked like she in shock. You got Anna and Roly going at it. Camila is being held back by security and she going back and forth with Roly. Hey, T pulls a mean screen on security though so Camila can get away. But Siki says tell that itch with a B to come back out so they can get into it because by this time, you know, it's up and stuck. She she ready. She she on demon time right about now. You got Biggie and Natalie. They're talking and she's telling Natalie, you switched up on me um, for her. And y'all, at the end of the day, facts are facts. She did. Natalie switched up on this girl. She did. 
She made it seem like Biggie Sydney starred her and was just following them around to get on the show. When I believe she was always supposed to be there, but she was played out of being there in the beginning for Roly. Let's be honest. So, Natalie, you 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 played in her face. You played in her face. You faced off her, babe. You did cold switch up for who you thought would be a fan fave of the season, and the fan fave that you thought she was gonna be played you. Cold game. So while they're talking, Roly grabs Biggie here. Y'all, <laughs> y'all should have took a play out of Roly book and had non snatchable hair, cause. This trying to be cute on a show where you know you're going to fight is insane. Absolutely in damn sane. Natalie telling Roly to let Biggie go right fucking now. Natalie climbs underneath security to pull Roly off Biggie. Natalie says that it's crazy that Roly would do that and she right there. It flashes back to Siki, and it was at this point, E.T. should have just aborted the damn mission. Do you see the look in this girl's damn eyes? This girl looks like a damn lion locked in on his prey. Her and Siki square up, if that's what you want to call it. I'm not understanding how E.T. stated she used to box. I'm, baby, box what? Gifts? Box toys? box Amazon packages for shipping. What did you use to box, baby? Because not according to what we're seeing. This is what happens when you step into a league you're not ready for. There's a reason boxing has weight classes. So this doesn't happen, lightweight. So she failed, she tripped. Now, in her defense, a lot of it was due to, to the rug being lifted or whatever, but she did trip. So she fell, and I'm like, this girl just had a BBL. I know her ass is still sensitive. Her stomach, too. I saw the size of those needles. <laughs> That's why I don't believe her when she says that her medical conditions have nothing to do with this. It might not totally, but it contributed. Your insides ain't even settled yet, boo, and you going against Tyson? Security held Tyseki back, because that's her new name now, Tyseki. Taiseki is being held back so she couldn't, so that uh, E.T. could get back up. And you continue, you continue to try to go at her. She sat you down, sis, and you ran up again. I'm like, at, at some point, it's got to stop. I started to feel bad for her because I know them punches hurt. I'm like, girl, just stay down. Please stay down. <laughs> Damn. What point are you trying to prove here? Because the point ain't proven, sis. E.T. finally grabs her stuff and she walks out. And I'm like, thank you, because child, I got tired of seeing you catch one twos. Biggie is being held back. She talking about, eat that bitch up, nigga. <laughs> you know how Biggie talk. Oh, goodness, this was just so much, and we're only in the first few minutes. The first few minutes. Next up, you have Roly and Camila. And I could tell by the way, by Camila's form, that this wasn't going to end well. You have your hands together, and you're lifting and dropping them at the same time, leaving an opening for Roly to swing. Roly has one hand up and one free. That's a swing and block stand, sis. Look at the security like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Roly lifts up her leg to kick and real talk, I didn't even think Roly could lift her leg this high. Real talk, I did not think Roly's leg could come up this high. Camila swings first. Roly is tagging Camila and she basically just holding Roly back. She tries to pull Roly and Roly just treating her like a whack-a-mole, baby, bop, bop, bop. Camila falls like the moles being whacked back into their holes. Camila trying to kick Roly falls, and Roly falls on her because remember, Camila is just holding on to her shirt. So Roly got her pinned down and folded up like a damn pretzel, legs in the air like she giving birth. <sighs> Y'all, I'm so disappointed. 
this is not the Camila from BGC, baby. It, it's just not. She been out the game for too long. <laughs> the little Mortal Kombat man should have ran out and said, whoopsie, because no, Camila. <laughs> no, I love me some Camila, but this wasn't it. This, this was not it. Security finally separates it, and Camila says she's going to go home to her kids, and she walks out. T runs up on Scotty and hits her and Scotty turns around on business and goes back at T. T starts running away. Scotty's giving her the boop boopy doop all up in her face. So now Siki and E.T. are about to swear up again and I'm like, Zeus, oh, stop this shit ish. I'm sorry, you two. <laughs> stop this ish. You see this girl can't hang with her. At some point, you got to just stop it. Nene looking like, Jesus, fix it. What in the baddie rumble is going on? E.T. tries to swing and Siki bobs it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bob. <laughs> she comes right back with a face shot. E.T. tries to come back with a punch and Siki turns her face and weaves it. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is a weave. Now do we understand what a bob and weave is? <laughs> E.T. catches her with one to the face. You know, it is a fight. Siki counters it with a crucial face shot. Y'all, why did she come back for more? I, this is what I don't understand. Just stop. Why did you come back for more? Her head is down. And at this point, she just trying to hold her back because she don't have anything left. And Siki just giving it to her all over the top of her head just power driving shots security is finally like okay enough is enough and separates it she walks off but look at her she walking off slowly with her head down trying to cover up her face et this is what happens when you let your mouth write a check that your ass can't cash this is what's meant by a hard head makes a soft behind by don't get too big for your britches. You remember all them sayings you used to hear? This is what happens when my granny would say, you don't believe fat meat greasy. This this is what, what mama used to talk about when she used to say, shut your mouth before I shut it for you. Don't make me shift your good day into a bad night. Basically, this is what happens when you talk too damn much. So security is trying to regain control and get everyone to their seats. They're telling everybody, um, make sure you have your person. Uh, Siki tells T to eat. She not you, sis. Oh. <laughs> Only eaters in your house is you and Tatty Sky, baby. Everybody else is eating Happy Meals. <laughs> they eating off the dollar menu. <laughs> so T squares up with Scotty. And y'all can say what y'all want but scotty is one bad mother shut your mouth you feel me <laughs> that girl is bad t tells scotty to run up and scotty says you just hit me i ain't running up on ish come here they square up and what's crazy is t has better form than scotty so how you got boop boop a doop by a chick with no shoes on is insane <laughs> So T bobs real quick. She swings at Scotty and misses. Scotty catches her arm mid swing and pops her in the face. T comes back with a swing. With a swing, Scotty catches her with another. T starts running away and Scotty is behind her tapping her. T. T, why you big ass? Why did you run? I d House B is doing a lot of running. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know when her mama saw this, she had to be like, what the hell was that? Because see, T has a black mama who looks like she cooked greens and chitlins and cornbread. <laughs> she looks like she from an era that if you don't whoop her ass, I'm whooping yours. Y'all know them type of mama. So I know she was disappointed because I was disappointed for her. Look, even Sky laughing. I'm not by myself. I know Sky was like, Sky was like, what the fuck? Look. Scotty's still going at her. Look, everybody ain't fighters, and that's fine. Because everything isn't about fighting. But don't use fighting words if you can't fight. Just sit back and be cute. 
be the bell of the ball so you don't get bounced like one. That's all I'm saying. So, E.T. reappears talking about everybody jumping. Sweetie, you weren't jumped. Let's stop it. You weren't jumped. Those hits might have felt like you were jumped, but you weren't. They saw swollen. That wasn't from getting jump sis. That was from running up against that brick wall. So E.T. tries to reach for Mariah because now, now she has to redeem herself. She has to run up on someone her size that she can possibly be so she can look like she whooped somebody at <laughs> this reunion. But security stops her. Janisha says she's never seen so many scarves and bonnets on set. <laughs> she says it's crazy. Mariah gets ready to swing on E.T., but security pulls E.T. back and grabs her. Mariah says it's crazy because she let her do an interview with her jacket on, and she's given her clothes and everything, so E.T. just has loyalty to no one. Just, just nobody. <sighs> Y'all, what did Anna and Biggie take before this show? Because their level of turnturation is insane. These two is turned all the way up. I think it was more than just weed, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Uh, so Roly says everybody looks busted and injured. Now Roly, baby, that that would be your friend. The only one that walked away bruised is E.T. Nobody else. Now Biggie did lose to you. I gotta get that to you. Now Biggie did lose to you, but her hair is still attached. Her makeup is still on. You tapped on her a few times, but not one bruise. Makeup still intact, although her wig is gone. Taisiki wig is off and her dress is torn, but the face is still intact. The only one looking bruised and busted and injured is E.T., your friend. I thought Camila had left, but she comes back and tries to get Roly again, but security grabs her. Roly says, I knew your set it off looking ass was going to try something. Hollered. Do y'all hear me? Chow hollered. <laughs> E.T. tries to get to Camila, but security stops it. So you still trying to fight Roly battles and Roly proves to you that her allegiance is to Natalie. But we'll get to that in a second. You still running around being this girl's lapdog. And that's why you're in the situation that you're in now. Roly tells Biggie uh, to tell everybody why she's really mad because she wanted to eat Roly Tissy Pat and Roly told her no. Y'all, I, I don't believe it. I think maybe Roly wanted her to. I think it might have been the other way around, to be honest. I mean, can y'all imagine these two big itches scissoring? I mean, big girls need love too, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, it's like watching two studs go at it. Listen, I'd rather watch alien porn on Pornhood before I watch that show. Because <laughs> that's just too much. Biggie and Roly, child, bye. So, E.T. tries to go at Mariah again. Y'all, she trying to redeem herself, but security just stops it again. Biggie falls out on the floor and starts rolling while Ro uh, Roly is talking. Biggie talking to Nene and she says Roly smells in four different ways. <laughs> she says her armpit, her ass, and the bottom of her titty smell four different ways. Baby deceased. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> y'all, we can't make this shit up. We cannot make this. How one person smell four different what? Y'all, I... Oh, Lord, I can't wait to hear the doll talk about this. Because the way I hollered, I know she gonna cut up. I know she gonna cut up. <laughs> Listen, Nene is hugging everybody and she hugs E.T. And Nene says, you came out here flying. And E.T. says she knew Natalie was going to set her up to get jumped. Natalie had nothing to do with it, babe. Your mouth on the enter of the net is what got you handled. You can't mad at, be mad at anybody but yourself. Nene says she don't know uh, who anybody is now that everybody is taking their hair off. Because everybody looks different. I, look, y'all, my stomach hurts from laughing so hard at this reunion. Because when she said <laughs> all of them look like different people with their wigs off, baby, I couldn't take it. I could not take it. 
<laughs> are y'all glasses still filled? If they not, go fill them back up. And on your way back, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Come on, now I'm on my road to a thousand. I'm giving you a safe place to come chill, hang out, and laugh a little bit. Hit that like button for your girl and subscribe for me. So, <laughs> Roly is talking to Natalie and she's explaining that she had nothing to do with it. Natalie said um, in the corner, E.T. said to her, you hang out with Roly and all these other girls, but you don't call um, to check on me. So, um... Um, Natalie says that she doesn't even have E.T.'s phone number, so how is she supposed to call her? Roly says she's going to go talk to her because that was real fucked up. Roly walks over to E.T. and asks her why she attacked Natalie, and E.T. says it was because she knew she was going to set her up to get jumped. Roly tells her it wasn't Natalie, and E.T. says she had already got the drop. And she was told that it was her and that she was going to have her set up. See, this is why you can't trust the liar, right? You called out just about everybody in house speed. This is what happens when consequences meet repercussions. And you got to deal with both of them bitches, sis. You got to deal with them both. Consequence, repercussion. So now E.T. is mad because she got called out on her shit by her friend now this is where i gotta commend roly because when your friend was wrong you told her she was wrong but the problem is you only do this when it works in your favor that's the problem i have with it if you're gonna call right right and wrong wrong then you gotta be willing to stand on it at all times and not just when it benefits you so now et is mad and she wants to storm off Janisha and Nini are asking Natalie why E.T. came straight at her. And Sky is asking Roly if, um, well, it flashes to outside. And Sky is asking Roly if she's okay. Speaking of E.T., and uh, Roly says she's trying to give her some air because she doesn't want to get into it with her friend over her opinion. But she says Natalie is also her friend. So Sky is doing what she does best blazing up <laughs> Roly goes to check on et so back on the stage natalie is explaining how she looks out the best way that she can she spends her own money to make sure that those that are in the area where she's hanging out at um who are on baddies are able to hang out with her and have a good time uh with her and she says she uses her own money to do it she says if they're with her and she buys a Fendi bag for herself, she buys them all a bag. And if that's the case, then I would feel some kind of way too. And I think what E.T. did really hurt her because she did look out for E.T. E.T. was the underdog on the show. And Natalie made sure you had wigs, you had makeup, you had clothes, you had boots. Y'all saw the, pro the progression in E.T.'s looks from the first confessional with those stiff-ass yakky crimps to the way she looks now at this reunion. Jonathan did your hair, sis. The Jonathan did your hair. And you turned around and turned on Natalie, the girl that put you on. Girl, bye. So Natalie says she's going to have to stop doing nice things across the board um, because it's really changed her as a person and being cross will do that to you but the unfortunate thing is it also messes it up for someone else who would come on the show and take the opportunity with gratitude and use it to help propel them to another level et has potentially messed up someone else's opportunity because of what she did being immature and being thirsty and that's the sad part all bs aside if this girl really does this for others to give them the opportunity to see what the other side of broke looks like gives them the opportunity to shine with her from her own pockets and she stops doing it because of what you did now she can't trust anybody yeah that's sad that's sad and it's fucked up because now you on your Krishan shit sis that's the same thing that Krishan did didn't take the opportunity to let it propel her to the next level so that she could keep climbing 
No, she continued to bite the hands that fed her. And now look at where she's at. Never bite the hand that feeds you. Y'all remember that saying? Now ETR depressed and crying on interviews. But I'm going to deal with that on a different show. But you did this to yourself, sis. You did this to yourself all by yourself. Nobody had a hand in this but E.T. So Biggie comes in and says E.T. told her um, that Natalie is the one who told her to pack her stuff up when they got their eviction papers. And she said she didn't want to do it, but Natalie was the one that told her to. Natalie says she didn't. And Biggie said, well, you got thrown under the bus. And Natalie said, well, clearly, look at what just happened now. So, um, Biggie says, you traded up on me for her weird ass. And Natalie said, how I trade? Biggie says, because this girl auditioned three times. And three times she got denied. And then you turned around and let her on. And look what she did to you on your show. And I'm really glad that Biggie stood up for herself and told Natalie like it was in this part. Because I do think she did too much during this reunion. But this right here, what she's saying right here, this was some real shit. It really was. And you can tell by the look on Natalie's face that she knew that Biggie was right. She knew it. She couldn't deny it. Natalie says it was because how she rode for Tommy on the last season. And Biggie said, but when y'all got into it and had y'all issues, did I say anything? Sky basically said, hold up. Tommy is my sister. Now, y'all can talk about whatever you want to, but tread lightly. <laughs> Biggie said, um, if you want to talk about neutral, when me and Roly fought, you said she beat my ass. And Natalie asked when. Janisha had to stand up and tell her, Natalie, you did. You actually did say that. So, we flash back to the outside. And Roly is confronting the stylist over E.T. saying that he was the one that told, Na- told her that Natalie was going to get her jumped. And this boy said he don't even talk to E.T. So Roly is calling for E.T. to come out and clear it up. E.T. is refusing to come. So another lie. Lie, lie, lie. At this point, E.T. ought to be called Lie T. Because why wouldn't you stand on business if this is the man who told you this? Why are you hiding? And y'all, let me pause for a second. Because I got to say, y'all... Zeus got some fine security. Do y'all hear me? At this point, the security guards need their own show because these ninjas are fine. What would we call the show? (laughs) I need security. Secure the bag. Secure. (laughs) Look, the Limu needs to just pause all this with these shows, with these broads, because we tired of them. Give the security. Give these men their own show. (laughs) Give them their own show, Limu. So, now we're back. And this is where I have a problem with Roly, right? Because why didn't you just come back into the set and say, E.T. said that your stylist was being messy, but the stylist said she was lying. And when I tried to bring her face to face with him so that she can tell him to his face that he said it, she refused. But instead of you coming in and saying that, you came in with a whole different story, sis. A story that had nothing to do with what happened. You tried to make it seem like it was due to phone conversations. That's that's not what happened by them trailers. Your friend hold up because she was about to get caught in another lie. Now this is where she showed who her allegiance was really to. She told Natalie, you are my sister and I would never let anyone jump jump on you. So she was basically letting E.T. know I'm always going to choose Natalie. This is where she really showed her allegiance. So in all honesty, it really wouldn't matter because her allegiance is always going to be to Natalie. And this is why I think they were over in House A licking lollipops. (laughs) Because E.T. behavior isn't the behavior of a friend that's jealous. E.T.'s behavior was the behavior of a lover who was jealous. Maybe Natalie let her lick that lollipop. And she was offended because after the show was over, she cut it off like she was a one-night stand. Come on now. Don't tell me this is how y'all behave over your friends. Because if this is how you behave over your friends, we need to have a different conversation about friendships. This didn't seem like a friendship quarrel. This seemed like a hit it and quit it 
quarrel. This seemed like a why you acting weird to me quarrel. <laughs> That's what this looked like. This is why I keep telling y'all, you better check your frenometer gauges. You better make sure the itches would be that you call your friends really are your friends. Because this new generation of friendships is above and beneath me. Y'all turn on each other. Y'all put each other business on blast. You stab each other in the back. You sleeping with each other's men's. Like who raised y'all friendships? I'm concerned about the, the, the nature of friendships these days. And why we are so thirsty to have friends that we're willing to call everybody a friend. So, we flash back and Nene says that it's unfair for everyone to hold Natalie accountable for who she hangs out with and who she talks to. But it is fair, Nene. It is fair. When you turn on me for someone you don't even know, E.T. was placed in House A because she was a fan favorite and because Roly and Biggie weren't getting along. And Natalie turned on Biggie. We got to be honest. It's not about fair and unfair. It's about right and wrong. And at the end of the day, the way Natalie did Biggie for E.T. was wrong. Biggie has every right to feel a way about it. E.T. does not. She was new. Natalie doesn't know her. Just like Roly said, she didn't start hanging out with Natalie until the season of Baddies East took place. So... Nene tells Biggie, uh, you really shouldn't give a fuck. And Biggie says that it's not about the fact that, um, it's not about that fact. She said, it's the fact that I see you support all of these itches with a B that never mess with you for real. She said that she even took money out of her own pocket and told Natalie when she was in her city to come hang out with her and let her turn up at her dime. So she treated Natalie the way Natalie says she treats the other girls. She said her and Roly been together, so she gets why they, you know, would be cool. But E.T., you just had her in the house when she shouldn't have even been there. And that's facts. That's facts. Whether her and Roly got along or not, she said they would have just fought it out every day if they had to. Real shit and real talk, Biggie. She telling her right. <laughs> Y'all gotta admit, she telling her right. It doesn't matter if you like her or not. Right is right and wrong is wrong. I don't care for Rolly, but I still gave her props for checking her friend when she was wrong. She told Natalie right. Natalie switched up. So Nene says, y'all are holding Natalie to too high of a standard. She only has so much power. The producers are the ones who choose which house they went in. And so Biggie counters with, she's holding herself at that standard. Because she's the one walking around like, this is her ish. Bam, Biggie is clocking it. Do y'all hear me? Now, I did get a little frustrated with Biggie because she wouldn't shut up and let somebody else talk. You got to be a baddie enough to listen as well, Biggie. <laughs> Passionate or not, there's a time to, to speak and there's a time to listen. You can end up wrong in the right situation because you don't know how to shut up. So, um, then they welcome to the stage Suki and Sapphire and DJ Sky comes out. So, Mariah says she knows Smiley is coming out and she's tired of it because Smiley keeps talking and talking on the interior of the net. So, she basically says, I heard you looking for me. Here I go. Come on out. And Smiley walks out. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. I would have walked out to that like this girl just checked me in my intro. Baby, no. No way. <laughs> so Janisha said that she liked to talk to the coochie girls who came in with this women empowerment and stand up for everybody that's being bullied stance. And Sapphire says that she doesn't feel bad because in that moment when she stood up, she felt she did what needed to be done because it was karma for Smiley, the way she behaved about the chain in the first place, in the house, on the internet, all that. She says she don't feel bad for it, but she says she does feel bad if a miscarriage happened. So, uh, Suki says that she doesn't feel bad either because Smiley brought her in some stuff when she texted her, pressing her, um, thinking Mariah was her friend and somebody that she really cared about, and she says she would do it again. So, Mariah basically says that um, that's why she thanked them when they got the uh, chain back for her 
and she said she was actually happy when she saw them come because in her eyes they were actually friends um anna said that she really doesn't think smiley is a bad person sapphire responds and says that she doesn't think she either she thinks it's a mental thing sky says smiley isn't a confrontational person she just basically wants to play a game with you so apparently smiley thinks everything is just a game and i believe it so janisha interrupts them and says she has to disagree because before the show even up until the reunion she's been been on the enter of the net trolling everybody so then mariah goes back into talking about the situation with the chain and she felt uncomfortable with the way that Suki was yelling at her um, to get her chain. And then Sapphire speaks up and says, no, when Roly threw the water on Smiley, you hit her. And once you hit her, you got to finish what you started now. Now, I have to agree with Sapphire, even though I think she's one of the fakest one of them on the show. In the words of the voodoo doll, <laughs> a broke clock is right twice a day. Gots to see it through, my girl. Go get your chain. So Mariah basically lets her know that her feelings was just hurt, but she respects her. Suki says that she was just emotional, and, you know, she kind of understands where she's coming from. And here goes Roly, trying to take a moment, trying to kick it back up again. Baby, the only thing you need to be kicking it up with is your high ass friend, Lai T. You're doing the very thing that you accused Mariah of. Getting involved in something that has nothing to do with you. So they start going back and forth. Suki is laughing. I mean, whatever the argument was, it was pointless at this point. I mean, over this damn chain. So Janisha asked Smiley what is her purpose for coming um, on the show was. And she said she came to get her chain. Mariah said, well, I don't have an itch. And they get ready to thump. But security, Sky and Natalie intervene and stop it. Scotty stops Biggie from running up. And let me say this, because Smiley didn't have a problem when it was Mariah's sister's chain. That she was flaunting around on the enter of the net bragging that she that she had it and she wasn't going to give it back. But you're pressed now that it's yours. If you had real motion, you would have just gotten another one. But you're following this girl and making diss track and it's showing that you really don't. You're acting like this chain is the only prized possession you have. Like it's the most expensive thing that you own and you got to give it back, get it back. Like I said, girls who are not used to having money will put it all on their neck, in their hair, or in their ass. It's, it's a fact and it shows. So you have E.T. going through a mental breakdown over this ish. I mean, it's entertaining for us to watch. But if you watch my other show on Krishan about real life versus reality TV, then you understand this is these girls' real life playing out on a screen for us. And when you don't know how to separate real life from reality TV, this is what you get. You get girls who are ready to crash and burn. And that's what you see from E.T. She's crashing out. That's what you see from Smiley. She's crashing out. Over a chain? We were always taught you never spend money on something you can't afford to lose. And the way she chasing this chain down, you think all of her life savings was wrapped up in this damn chain. But they're crashing out. And the problem with crashing out is everybody doesn't know how to recover from it. Sometimes crashing out ends badly. And I hope that doesn't happen with E.T. Well... I guess we have to wait until next week to see part three to see how this all ends. But drop in the comments and let me know what you thought about this episode. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink and let's drink, till we meet again. Ta-ta.